Hello, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to my D4 rebuild. This is your first time watching. My name is Matt. This here is Charlie, and on this video, I am planning on getting the transmission case cover put back on. This is something I rebuilt in a previous video. And if you want to watch the previous videos, just look in the description. There's a playlist there with everything. I have a few concerns about it, but I'll get to that in a second. The plan here is to dry fit it first just to make sure everything works okay. And then once I've convinced myself I'm happy with it, I will put the gasket material down and finish it off. My concerns kind of center around the steering clutches and I'll show you why here. The first is when you pull down on here, this would be to uh, disengage the clutch. You hear that clicking? That is due to slop in this linkage over here, on this linkage here. Now on the other clutch, which is the right hand side, it does the same thing, but also there's some slop here. And that's due to slop right there, you can see it. I'm not sure if this is a problem or not yet. I think it might, the, when you actually, it's up against the clutches, it might kind of counteract all this, I'm not sure. So that's kind of my reason for wanting to dry fit everything first. Besides all the time I've spent into rebuilding this cover, and fixing the linkages. I'm assuming because it's all mechanically controlled, you're gonna have, you're gonna want that feedback of what the machine's doing by how everything feels. And if you have a bunch of slop in the linkages, that's just gonna cause problems or throw you off. I should probably also mention, I actually have no idea how the controls are supposed to feel. Everything on here was locked up, frozen or broken when I took it apart. I've never used or ridden on a D4 before. I've never, in fact, like this distance right here is probably the closest I ever came to a dozer before I bought this thing. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just using my best judgment. The one thing I got to do first, I keep forgetting to do, is I got to rebuild the shifter. And before I do that, it looks like one, two, three, four gaskets I'm going to have to make up here. I could use RTV, but I have a feeling I'm going to be taking this off again. So. Looking through the parts manual to see if there's any hints on how to get this thing apart. So for my serial number, these part numbers do not match up to what's actually on here. So this is either like a retrofit, because like, first of all, this handles like 90 degrees, which obviously mine is not like that. And then some of these other numbers, like the, the, the part number for here, which is stamped on there, doesn't match up. So I think I have a later shifter knob. So the directions here say you're supposed to just take the handle off and the whole lever is supposed to come out, which it's not. This, uh, I took a closer look at this boot and it's, it's got holes all throughout it. It's like torn. So I checked online. Look at this. There's, there's one on Amazon. It, it's the same part number. I don't know what it's doing. This must just be a generic boot, 15 bucks. So. I'll take that hit and I'm just going to cut this boot off here. Come on now. Oh man, that thing is on there. That's nah, just sliding. Right. Let's hold it in place with this maybe. Come on now. Oh. Is it working? Oh my gosh, that thing was stuck. Is there anything Vice Crips can't do? Fair amount of rust on the threads. That's probably why it was so stuck. Okay, so the boot, the outer boot was, was ripped. And like I just said, I found one for 15 bucks on Amazon, which is the first time I found a dozer part on there. I think this is a seal uh, that has degraded and man it's going to be nice to be able to shift this thing without dragging all this dirt around here through here so I'm glad I took it apart I ended up having to drill that cotter pin I mean this I can bend this lower thing back in but it kept popping up this spring pushed it up so this okay this is actually metal it's very rusted 
This is another plate. So it looks like maybe this had the sealer on it. I'm not sure. So let me clean all this stuff up. And then I guess I'm gonna have to try to find a new seal, obviously. Uh, I'm sure they're around. But uh, this stuff was really dirty. Yeah, so this, this holds the boot in place. There's a little lip around here to hold it. And it is just rusted. I ordered all the parts I'm gonna need to rebuild this thing. They're gonna be here in a while, so we'll get back to that either later this video or next video. But fortunately, we don't need that to continue the rest of this project. And up next is going to be these. These are the uh, control shafts that go over the steering clutch area. I haven't touched these since I've taken them out. They're covered in grease. This, the, these are like the oiling cups. So oil drips through here and goes onto the uh, throwout collar, I believe. This one was broken. So I, I ordered another one, uh, which is also broken. But interestingly enough, this one has a hole in it. This one has no hole, it's completely blocked off. So I, I am, now I don't have any idea what's going on with that. There's obviously a hole here. Uh, I don't know, we'll figure that out later. Anyway, I'm gonna break this down and clean it up. These bearings go on the shaft right here and then these uh, levers right over them. These were completely coated in, in good grease, like the grease was not hardened. I'm assuming they're gonna be okay to reuse, but I'll have to clean them up and take a good look at them. Hopefully they're okay to reuse though, since I don't have to wait for parts. I can't put the cover back on until this is ready. Probably should have, just to keep the theme of things going, painted like these and this. But uh, no, I don't think I have time to waste on that right now. All right, well I got everything painted here. These bearings, they did clean up real nice, but it's kind of hard to express this. There's a slight bend to some of these. And this might just be personal preference, but I prefer my bearings to be like squared up and not a parallelogram like this one. I don't know if you can tell or not. There's quite, on this side, there's quite a bend off. And this one's going like that, like it's gotten smashed. This is the worst one for, by, by far. I mean, you can just see, hopefully you can tell. You know, I could bend these back. And, and use them. I mean, they're only ever rotating like that much, but uh, I got the trade number off there. This is not a roller right here. This is just the cage. So I ordered some new ones. The only way out of a money pit is to keep digging. I do have the new bearings in, but I'm gonna use the old ones for this mock-up just because the new ones are pre-packed and I don't wanna get grease all over the place right now. I did order two new washers too. These, I think these lines are from the cotter pins that are like worn in. That's how old these things are. So we got washer. And then this. And then washer. Oh my gosh, I forgot the bearings. I can see why the tip breaks off so easily when you're putting it in, because it's hitting, if you look on here, it's hitting like the, uh, it, it sits right inside of here, and it's hitting those. So it's gotta be careful about that. Uh-oh. I had to trim some of the cotter pins down so they wouldn't hit. And that just bolt holds it in place. Okay. And then this. That's it right there. Good thing I'm practicing this now because once it's all greased up, it's a lot less fun to mess around with it. All right. And that's going to do it for this. Now it's time to put the case on and uh, 
Oh, that is ice cold already. How long have I been out here? One last thing I gotta do, I'm gonna adjust the brakes now. Uh, you adjust the steering clutches once the cover's on, but the, the brakes, it's gonna be best to do now. So the manual says uh, press the pedal three to four inches and it should be snug, but not impeding travel. So it's definitely not tight enough yet. The other adjustment was that stud that was hanging me up in the last video. And the manual says you wanna press the brakes all the way, tighten that up all the way, and then back it out one and a half turns. All right, so I'll push with this, and then, can I reach it? Yep. Pays to be tall, sometimes. So when I took the top off, I was able to ratchet strap these down because the cover is gonna hit them, but now that the brakes aren't shot, I'm gonna have to take these off. And I just caught a rubber hammer to that finger right there. And it is not happy about it. By the way, I get a lot of questions about my other finger that I drilled. That's this one. It's almost back to normal. I can go out in public now without wearing gloves. Looks like there's a uh, bronze bushing in there. And that one's not terrible. It's, it's your feeder on here, so who cares? This one is quite bad. And it goes in and out. So I'm not going to worry about those. All right, I got some studs here. And the uh, purpose of these is to guide the top on. Not so much right now, but I'm especially concerned about when I put RTV over this thing. I don't want it to, to like, you know, set it down and having it squashing all around. Man, this finger did not like getting, it's already swelling up. I don't think, I think I hit the bottom, so I just smashed it really bad. Hopefully the nail doesn't fall out. I have a repeat of last time. Now, I want to make sure the uh, the interlock teeth are up. I don't want to smash into that, so that's right. There's no uh, gasket or anything on on it. It's not super heavy, this thing. It's probably, I'd say maybe 200 pounds, 300 pounds, probably about 200. All right, down slow. All right, one stud's in. All right, that's two. Okay, all the studs are lined up. Uh, let me just make sure nothing's gonna be hitting as it goes down. So this yellow bracket right here is gonna hit, obviously. Uh, if I go in too far though, the interlock teeth are gonna come out. You see them, you see them coming down right there? So I don't want to, as this pushes up, I just, I don't know. Okay, I've just pulled it forward. I'm gonna lower it so it clears it and then I'll push it back. That should be plenty of space before the uh, interlock teeth engage. Yep, that'll work. All right, first thing to test is the interlock. Oh yeah, okay. So that's clutch in or out, and then let me pop that back out of gear. And then with the clutch out, yeah, I can't move any of those. All right, so interlock works. That's good, it wasn't working before, if you'll remember. All right, so next up is the steering clutch. And we might have a problem here. Does it need to be, maybe it must need to be pointing up. I had it pointing down like that one, but I think it needs to be pointing up to get in there. Whoops. Well, that's why we're doing this. Yeah. 
actually maybe before I shoot myself in the foot here and using a cheap Harbor Freight gauge, I should use an actual uh, measuring gauge here. Yeah, it's actually 0.5 exactly. I have a pretty good idea on what's going on with these bearings too. So basically all that holds this in place is these two cotter pins. And over here it's the same as the cotter pin here and then in here. These aren't as bad up here, but this has a ton of slop in it. And over here it's so bad that you can see, you can actually see the rollers of that bearing. So if it's not on the rollers, I mean, it's just, that's, that's got to be why those bearings are so screwed up. So I think what I'm going to try to do is shim these up just a little bit so there's not this much wobble. So I got some new washers over here. These are a little bit thinner, but I think I can maybe double up maybe. We'll see. I kind of got it mocked up on the vise here. So right now I have two new washers here. This side doesn't use a washer. And then one and two. It it's, fits in here, but I think it's a little uh, too tight. So I'm gonna take one washer off from here and here and put them on the bench sander and sand them down. And then I'm gonna have to mark all these so I put them back in the right arrangement when I'm done. Okay, it took a minute, but I got about eight thousandths off of both of these. So, let's see, try this out. Okay, so, I don't want these thrust right up against the cotter pins. And it looks like there's not, because they'll, they'll wear the cotter pins out. So it looks good. Yeah, and we got a little bit of play here, so it's not grinding. I think that's going to be good. Yeah, I got the new pin here. Oh yeah, no play. All right, all right. Just got to do the other side, and then I have to put the uh, I'm gonna have to put the springs back on. Unfortunately, you can't uh, get it off with the springs on there. Got the new pins in. It still uh, clicks when you pull it, but there's no uh, jiggling in the handle. It just pops, but you don't feel it. You don't really feel it in the handle. So I think that's what I'm aiming for. down. All right, this is the same kind of rubber I used on the bevel gear, but it's a uh, quarter inch thick by three eighths wide. I think it did three sixteenths thick on the other one, but there's a lot more weight on this and it's going to compress more. So I'm, I'm fine with it sticking out because it's going to push in. The other number to remember on this stuff is the hardness. So this is 40A, which is not very hard, but um, you can get like the 60 or the 80A, which is very, very hard and does not like to compress. So same plan here. I'm just going to super glue this to the metal all the way around and then I'll super glue it back up into here. It's uh, not sticking to this metal very good. It needs some time to bond. All right, just this last little section right here. These maggots are like a godsend. This is gonna take a while. I should have gotten this in a caulking gun though. This is pretty murder on the hands. Okay, so basically my hands kind of gave out squeezing those tubes. So I took the tip off and I ended up squeezing way, way too much, but that's fine. It'll be okay. It's just gonna be a little bit messy, but I can deal with that. So I'm letting it tack up for a minute. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drop the top on and we'll screw it down. Should probably also mention that I forgot to put the rods back in. So I got about a 10 minute window here to get these on before the uh, RTV starts hardening up. These bearings are pre-packed with grease. So all I need to do is put them on I got one side in. I'm kind of scrambling here to get this, uh, get this in, get everything greased up, ready to go for the last time. There we go. All right, that's easy.
And lower down the other stud back here. All right. Interlock set up. And we're on, are we on all four studs? Oh, we are, all right, we can just drop it down now then. There it is. All right, I'm gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes under its own weight like this. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna screw it down. Just to let that RTV set up a little bit. Once it gets a little hard, then you clamp it. And that's how you get a actual good seal from our TV. These are set up right. I do need to put some grease in there, that socket. These are free. So I think we're in good shape here. All right, got most of the screws in. I need a few, I need to size up a few like these big ones. But uh, if you notice, there's a nice clean bead of RTV sticking out all the way around this case, which is exactly what you want to see. It means it's sealed up real nice and uh, we should be good to go here. So once it dries, then I'll just scrape it off with a razor blade. Steering clutches. So I'm gonna pull up here. There's a click, but you do not feel really anything in the handle. It feels very nice. For the next video, I'm not 100% sure what I was going to do. I was thinking of painting it like just this and then painting the engine separately. But now I'm thinking maybe I'll put the engine in and then paint it because I don't I want to paint this this top part now before I put the seat and the tank on and all that and the uh, the skid plate. And I was thinking of just brushing the bottom and then spraying the top spraying the engine. So I'm not sure. I'm still thinking if I want to paint these separately or just paint them as one piece. I'm thinking I'm just going to paint them as one piece. So maybe next video is going to be getting the engine ready to go and then uh, putting it on here. Well, that's going to be it for this video. I was really expecting it to just drop the top on, make some adjustments and then drop it back on. But there was a lot of waiting for parts, messing around with stuff. I still have not covered getting the shifter assembly back together. You can see I've painted it and um, I've, I've found a lot of parts for it. I get a lot of questions about where I get the manuals and where I find parts, so I'll cover that on the next video. I have a few you know, tricks I've picked up just on finding stuff. But uh, anyway, that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll be back soon.